In a world increasingly defined by automation, robotic manipulators have taken the center stage. From assembly lines and warehouses to healthcare and agriculture, robotic manipulators are a cornerstone of innovation and efficiency. To better understand what it takes to design such a system, over the past several weeks, myself and two other friends have been developing our own robotic manipulator system to pick up and sort objects. Our goal was to program our robot to detect different colored balls and sort them based on their color. The robotic arm we're using is the Open Manipulator X, which is a low-cost option with open-source software and hardware. This arm has four Revolute joints that spin, giving the robot a total of four degrees of freedom or four independent ways that the system can move, one for each of the joints. We're also using a standard USB web camera for our vision system to detect the colored balls. The first thing we did was calculating the forward kinematics of our robot. Forward kinematics is where we take the current joint angles of the robot and use them to figure out where the tip of the arm is. We did this by following the denovit hartenberg convention, which is a fancy method for determining how the joints and links of a robotic arm are connected to each other and how they move relative to one another. First, we assign frame axes to each of the joints and the tip of the arm. Then, using the frames and robot dimensions, we can find transformation matrices between each of the joints. Multiplying each of the transformation matrices together gives us a single transformation matrix between the base frame of the robot to the tip of the arm. This transformation matrix is our forward kinematic solution because it describes the position of the tip of the arm relative to the base of the robot using the current joint angles. Now that we can take any configuration of the robot and figure out where the tip of the arm is, our next step is to figure out how to work it backwards. Meaning, we pick a position that we want the tip of the arm to go to and figure out what joint angles are needed to get us there. This process is called inverse kinematics. Unfortunately, calculating the inverse kinematics is a lot more complicated because there might be multiple or even infinite solutions for a single position. There might even be no solutions if the position isn't reachable. But the general idea is to use trigonometry to calculate possible joint angles and then plug those values back into the forward kinematics to see which configurations actually work. After writing some code to do this, we now have an arm that we can send to any reachable position in the workspace. Now we just need to figure out where to send the arm. This is where the camera comes in. We need to use the camera to detect where the balls are and what color they are so that they can be sorted, but doing so is no easy task. Essentially, we need to take a 2D array of pixels and extract information on the location of each ball and what color it is. The camera we're using has a wide angle fisheye lens, which adds a lot of distortion, especially around the edges of the image. To fix this, we use MATLAB's Camera Calibrator app, which takes a bunch of calibration images of the checkerboard and uses them to estimate various parameters of the camera, such as focal length and lens distortion. The app detects the intersection points of the checkerboard pattern and tries to minimize the reprojection error between the 2D pixel coordinates and the actual 3D world coordinates. Once we obtain the parameters of our camera, we can use them to remove the fisheye distortion so the lines of the checkerboard always appear straight. We now have a way to take pixel coordinates of the image and project them onto the checkerboard to turn them into coordinates in the real world. But these points lie in the reference frame of the checkerboard, not the robot. The robot needs to know where the object is relative to its origin so that it can move to it and then pick it up. Points that lie in the reference frame of the checkerboard can be transformed into points in the reference frame of the robot by using a transformation matrix. To find this matrix, we can look at the frame axes of the checkerboard and robot and find the rotation and translation between them. With this transformation matrix, we can now turn 2D pixel coordinates into 3D world coordinates that the robot can actually use. Now to get the pixel coordinates of interest, we feed our camera image through an image processing pipeline designed to pick out and classify the colored balls. First, we equalize the brightness of our image to ensure everything stays consistent in rooms with different light levels. Next, we undistort the image using the camera parameters we calculated. We then mask out anything outside of the checkerboard because we don't care about it and we don't want to pick up any other brightly colored objects in the room. Next, we apply a color mask to separate the colored balls from the black and white checkerboard. Then we pick out the most prominent circles in the image. And lastly, for each circle, we apply a red, orange, yellow, green, and gray color mask to see which color matches best. At this stage, we've obtained the location of each ball and classified its color. There's just one last problem. When the 2D pixel coordinates are transformed into 3D world coordinates, the image is projected directly onto the plane of the checkerboard. However, the actual ball sits on top of the checkerboard with some fixed height, 
It doesn't lie flat on the checkerboard like a piece of paper. If this error isn't accounted for, the robot will attempt to pick up the ball slightly behind its actual position. But using the known height of the balls and some clever geometry, we can send the robot to the actual location of the ball instead. Now, putting everything together, we take an image with our camera, use our vision pipeline to pick out the colored balls, use our camera parameters to project pixel coordinates onto the checkerboard, transform our checkerboard coordinates into robot coordinates, adjust for the height of the ball, use inverse kinematics to send the robot to pick up the ball, and finally, using its color, decide where to place the ball. With all these steps combined, we finally have a fully fledged design for picking up and sorting the colored balls. Although this isn't the most practical robot out there, pick and place robots just like this one are used across a ton of industries. This project's been quite the journey for our team, so we thank you so much for sticking to the end. Happy robot building, and thanks for watching. Thank you.